going to continue with day two, the oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. So in class, you're, I'm going to take the dough out probably about five minutes before you enter the classroom, and you're going to unwrap your dough. I'm going to have it in foil also. And basically, this is a drop cookie. With a drop cookie, usually what you do is you drop it from two spoons the same size. Now, your recipe says to drop it onto an ungreased cookie sheet by teaspoonfuls. So these would be teaspoons, two teaspoons the same size. You could make them bigger by using two tablespoons, but of course that would add on to your time. However, because the dough is gonna be cold when you come into class and we have to do it as a two day recipe, we actually just take it with our hands, okay? So what I'm gonna do is you're gonna have your, your uh, hands washed like I just washed mine, your hair will be up and you'll have your apron on. Um, so we don't use the teaspoons, all you're really going to need is cookie sheets, a spatula, and cooling racks on day two. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna notice that it is a little crumbly and that's fine. You're gonna take portion sizes, you're not rolling it, it's not a molded cookie. You're just gonna take portions. And you want your cookie uh, dough to be the same size, okay? Because you want your cookies to cook at the same rate. You want them all the same size because if you have a small cookie and a big cookie, the big cookie is gonna be raw and the smaller cookie is going to end up getting overcooked or burned. So what I'm gonna have you guys do is go three across and four down. So they're about the same size, I'm not rolling them, I'm just pressing the dough together because it does get a little crumbly. And with this recipe, before I put it in the oven, what you're going to do is you need to press the dough down gently. All right, so just keep taking portions and I believe uh, in the recipe on day two, I have everyone doing uh, this portion of the recipe. So you wanna make sure they are all the same size, okay? It's not about how many cookies you get, okay? It's about learning in class and then being able to make it at home, hopefully, uh, for your family. These are one of my favorite cookies that we do make in the classroom. Okay, so I'm just kind of pushing it together any extra dough will be placed in the middle. Now these cookies don't spread that much, right? So again, I'm gonna go three across and four down. And any extra, you're gonna get two full trays. I've already made uh, one tray up. I don't have a lot of time in class to show you uh, this video clip. I may actually give it as a homework assignment, but we will see what happens this week in class. So you get like 20, anywhere from 20 to possibly 25 of these cookies. Okay, so basically they're about all the same size. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take portions. I have another tray that I've already made here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. So I have two full trays at this point. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop any extra in the middle. Now in class, I do know I have these smaller trays. I may be able to be, be able to give you uh, bigger trays on the day um, that we do it in class. But we're gonna see how it works out for me here. And this is about the same amount of cookies you should get. So you can see it is sticking, it is a little messy. Like I said, it's easier than using the spoons in class. If you were to do this at home, it would be really sticky at this point. You wouldn't have to refrigerate it and you would have to use the spoons, all right? Just kind of pressing it together here. I already have my oven on 350 degrees and it's been preheated. And I'm just gonna put that one there. I'm gonna pop another one in here. You can see it is crumbling a little bit on me. And I'm just gonna bake, try to squeeze one more in over here. As you can see, it is extremely messy. My son did not wanna help me with this portion because he didn't wanna get his hands dirty. Right, Stinker? Oh yeah. Yes, he doesn't wanna get his hands dirty. He doesn't like to get his hands dirty. Okay, you continue to eat your dinner. He's over on the couch eating some tacos that mommy made. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my hands quickly. Release, rinse them off. And 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to press them down slightly. I could have just did that, but they were just too sticky. So what you want to then do is just slightly push them down. What I use is three fingers on one hand, just slightly. You don't want to totally press it down, but you want to slightly push them down. And like I said, these should not spread into each other. So very lightly press them down again. I will be checking in class to make sure you press them down. Okay, there we go. All right, so what I'm going to do is, you can't see me, but I'm going to put oven mitts on over to the side here. And I'm going to pop them in my oven for about five to six minutes. And then what you need to do is you're going to actually switch and turn your trays halfway through your time. So the one that's on the bottom is going to go on the top, and the one on the top is going to go on the bottom, and then you're going to turn your trays. You're not flipping the cookies. Some students think they're flipping the cookies. No, you're just turning the trays because if you leave the bottom one on the bottom the whole time, your bottom uh, rack is going to burn. Right? So I'll show you uh, when they come out in a few minutes. Okay, so now my timer is about to go off here. I have about 13 seconds. I'm gonna show you what I mean by switching and turning the trays in the process of doing that. You wanna be careful when you do this portion. You wanna make sure you don't hit the cookies on the top uh, of your oven. Some, some students tend to hit while taking them out. So you're always going to open the door all the way. I'm gonna turn my timer off. So remember, you, I said that you want the the ones that are on the bottom on the top, so I have a counter here, and the one on the top on the bottom. So what you're gonna do is now actually turn the tray carefully. I'm gonna put this on the bottom. I'm gonna turn this and put this here. So I went six minutes, and I think I'm gonna go five minutes here, okay? You can always put more time on once they overcook. You can't take that away. So you can always add time, you can't take it away. So I'm gonna put my timer for another five minutes and then I'll check it from there and I'll show you the end result. Okay, so one batch of my cookies came out about a minute ago and they're a nice golden color, but one of the biggest things with this recipe is they need to continue to cook about another one to two minutes on the hot cookie sheet because they're continuing uh, the baking process. They're golden. There's my other batch. My, one of my trays weren't quite ready, so I added another minute. So let me just quickly take them out. Put those ones over here. Okay, so when you do take them out of the oven, they're gonna go right onto the table that you work on. You're gonna wait the one to two minutes. My have been at least one and a half to two minutes here. And then you're always gonna make sure you have an oven mitt or a pot holder on the hand that doesn't have the uh, spatula in your hand because what happens is students go and to take the cookies off and they automatically grab the cookie sheet that's moving and they burn their hand. So you always want to make sure that you have something on, uh, for me, my left hand because the spatula is in uh, my right hand, right? And then they should come right off. You're going to put them on your cooling rack. If there's time in class, there should be because with these cookies, they tend to fall right apart. They're nice and soft. I have a little bit of wax paper, a uh, piece of wax paper underneath my cooling rack and that's just for easy cleanup also, right? So they should very nicely come off. They shouldn't stick. You have one stick of butter in there that actually helps too. And this spatula tends to work nicely. We're gonna use this in class too, All right? So to keep the cookies nice and soft, I like my cookies to stay soft. I like to dip them in milk too. Um, but what you do is you take a piece of bread, a half piece of bread, a full piece of bread, break it up, leave it full, and put it in your cookie jar with the cookies. And what happens is the moisture from the bread goes into your cookies and keeps your cookies soft, and the piece of bread goes stale, okay, which means you wouldn't be able to um, eat that piece of bread then, right? So this has been sitting here too. I'm going to move this over, and again, I have my left hand here, and I have a whole another cookie sheet. Whoops right here. Taste, it doesn't taste, it smells delicious. In a moment, I'll probably taste one, two. The unfortunate thing about me doing this at home is that you're not going to get to taste the demo cookies. But remember, it's all about making it in class, learning how to measure, how to work with a team, 
some basic skills and life skills you'll have throughout your life. So it did make, let's see how many cookies it made. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm gonna say close to 30 cookies, I didn't count. Exactly, but anywhere from 25 to 30 cookies here, depending on how many people are in your group, three, four, possibly five people in your group. You'll split them up, and of course, if there's any extra, you could always give to your teacher who taught you how to make oatmeal chocolate chip cookies. So again, oatmeal chocolate chip cookie, more raisins you can add, is gonna be a drop cookie, even though we didn't drop it uh, off of a teaspoon. So hopefully you enjoy making these in class two as our second uh, cookie in the uh, lab unit. All right, enjoy.